Hey everybody, I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching Sit Down. Niambi Niambi is here with us. What's up, man? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing great. Thanks so much for jumping on today. Yeah, thank you, DJ. So we were just talking off camera about your uh, prolific college basketball career. Lewisburg, <laughs> Pennsylvania, Bucknell. What do you remember yeah. the most about playing hoops at Bucknell? Uh, what I remember most is hilarious. Being yelled at uh, by uh, Coach Flannery uh, every, every uh, practice. It was just one constant barrage of yelling. Uh, and I made it through four years of, of, of yelling. <laughs> I feel like a lot of coaches used to be like that. You know, it's like the yeah. top night model, and it's like we're going to have that at every level. I feel like hopefully it's not yeah. like that anymore, but, yeah, yeah, you're probably right on the tail end of that. Oh my gosh, it was bad. And I, you know, I had that in high school too. So it was something I was used to. I mean, I, had a, I mean, my coach, uh, coach uh, Charlie Thompson in, in uh, high school was a, a Bobby Knight clone. Mm. So, I mean, looked like him, dressed like him, yelled like him, you know, threw stuff like him, you know, but we won. So, you yeah. know. Yeah. Winning cures all, but like kids, kids don't like being yelled at like that. They don't play better when that happens. No, 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 no. But he actually brought the best out of me. So I'll, I'll, I will say that. I will say that. That's cool. So you have this interesting yeah. journey where you've lived in a bunch of different places around the country. You got into acting. So how did you make the transition from hoops to acting late in college? Uh, you know, I, I had always been acting. Um, you know, when I first did my, I did my first uh, play in elementary school. It was a Cinco de Mayo play. I had one line. I don't remember the line. <laughs> I wish I could. But I remember how much that line like meant to me in terms of like being on stage and saying it. And so I would take acting classes as, you know, just something on the side, something fun to do in middle school and in high school. And um, I would do speaking uh, competitions when I was in, in high school, the forensics club, uh, interpreting people's speeches. Um, but, you know, never really thought about acting as a career because basketball was my life. I love basketball so much. I mean, I was, I'm a sports junkie. So I, like, I always thought my life was going to end up in sports. Uh, I thought I was going to play overseas, you know, somewhere if I was going to play in the NBA. And um, it wasn't until I was injured in high in not, not in high school, but in college. I was injured my senior year. And uh, I decided, uh, I saw this, this um, flyer on the, um, the board somewhere on campus, you know, this Martin Luther King Gala. And I said, oh, you know, I used to do this speech in high school. You know, I'll, I'll break it out for, for this. And mind you, I was known as the quiet kid in, in, uh, in high school and college. You know, the only time any, anybody ever heard me speak was, you know, whether I was telling a joke to a friend on the side and he would laugh and everyone would be like, what, what, what? And he'd be like, ah, yeah. And then, um, and then they were like, what do he say? I'm like, nothing. Then, um, then of course, uh, you know, me, you know, talking trash when somebody started, I would never talk trash unless somebody talked trash to me. Mm. So I always like to say, don't talk me into my game. And so a lot of people would talk me into my game. And then of course, that's when, you know, I'd go off dunking, doing all that stuff. Um, but um, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life um, senior year and uh, went up to the person running the program who knew who I was and said, I want to do this speech, this eulogy for the Martin children. And, uh, you know, that Martin Luther King did, uh, you know, for the uh, four little girls that were bombed in Birmingham, unfortunately. And um, she said, what? You want to, you want to do, um, oh, oh, okay. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, you don't think I can do this? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, I'm about to show you. So then I took the speech, memorized it, didn't call it acting took the speech and, and studied the speeches behind the speech, didn't call it acting. Learned his cadence, learned his walk, the gait, you know, didn't call it acting. All things that I, uh, you know, did for fun to really get into the, you know, into this speech, this character, this person, who Martin Luther King was. So when the, um, the gala happened, did it, did the speech, and then all of a sudden just this whole, this, I don't know, just they call it catching the bug. This, mm -hmm. this thing happened to me. I think the spotlight hit me and I was like, whoosh, what's going on? And did the speech and it felt like an out of body experience. And this professor of mine, Professor Glenn Griffiths, comes up to me and says, Yambi, you're an actor. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I am. And then from then on, like, never looked back. You know, started a theater group there at Bucknell. 
and moved right to New York and uh, went to a conservatory right away. And so, you know, it's been, it's been a, a dream since then. That's awesome. You know, it's really interesting because people assume things based on their identity, right? So at that point, you're just the basketball player for this person. Yeah. And quickly you prove them wrong. And there's some sweetness yeah. in that vindication. And look at how it set up the rest of your life. Like if you hadn't gotten hurt, who knows? I'm sure you still find this in some way, shape or form, but that injury opens up these doors that may not have opened up in the same way. So true. So true. So true. I mean, I, you know, I had a tough time at Bucknell, you know, in terms of basketball. Um, uh, but I don't regret it mm -hmm. because I would not be where I am today because, uh, you know, I found who I am when I was there. Yeah, it all ends up working itself out. And just the fact yeah. that you were a Division One athlete is an unbelievable accomplishment. It's something that you yeah. can be proud of the rest of your life, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, man, I could ball, man. I used to, <laughs> like, so give me, give me I, like, the comparison of what your game was like. Like, who's the, who's the closest um, comp? Well, here's the thing. Okay, so I grew up loving Magic Johnson, right? Mm -hmm. Not saying that that was who my game was at, I mean, a pattern after, but that's who I loved. Love Magic. So the move that, that I would use from him was his spin move, the, you know, mm -hmm. the Earl the Pearl spin. So I loved using that. So it was like a mixture of people. So like, you know, Grand Hill, because, you know, I had the little like, you know, set of step crossover. So I'd use, you know, that. Then you had AI, who eventually got that crossover from Dean oh, Barry, who was a walk Amazing runner, crossover, you know, so. yep. Do that his his amazing crossover right so like different players that um you know like isaiah thomas just the way he would handle the rock you know that was another cat so i try to like take from different people uh you know in terms of you know my game and then i could jump i had a 42 inch vert back then, wow you know so i could jump you know i could like jump out the gym um and i could shoot the problem was that i was so much it was i was so i had to i had to do everything right you know, I had to do it right for my coach. I had to always do it right. So um, I didn't allow myself the freedom to improvise, mm -hmm. you know, which is something I learned later on through acting. And I'm like, man, if I had this, uh, this mindset in terms of just improvisation, trusting the plays, trusting I know it, trusting, you know, trusting I know the blocking, right. you know, you do you play your, you know, your plays, you have blocking, you know, you have the rehearsal, uh, and then you 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 uh, show time. You execute uh, you know the uh, the blocking. You execute the um, the uh, you know the passes. When you pass the line to some someone else, and they pass the line back to you. You catch it, and and you 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 know you shoot with the punchline, or you, you know you shoot with the z the zinger or whatever. Um, uh, every night, those things are different. You know, on stage, same way with with uh, competition with sports. You have the plays, you have the, um, you know, uh, the way you, you know, you move the ball around all, but, but um, the opponent, what they do changes and dictates how, you, you know, those, those plays are executed, you know, but they're still the same plays every yeah. single time out. So um, the parallels were very similar to me, you know, in terms of being on stage, uh, acting versus being on that stage, being the basketball court uh, and, and playing. And um, yeah, so like, uh, I don't know where this started, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, that, but that's, that's, you know, it was fun, um, you know, sort of realizing that how much uh, basketball really did help me uh, as a performer, yeah. you know, being on a big stage. Totally. And I feel like your game would have been great for basketball today, also based on everything you just described. Oh, yeah, man, because I could shoot. Here's the thing. I could jump out of the gym and I could shoot. Right, and it's positionless you know? now. And, like, if yeah. you watch Bucknell today, they're, they're taking 30, 40, 50 threes a game. Like, it's a totally different oh my game gosh. than you were there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think it worked out all right. I think the acting No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> well, why, don't we, why don't we talk about the good fight? Because that's a really yes, awesome please, show. Please, and it's please. definitely one that cuts through with a really crowded TV space. So what's been the best part of this experience? The best part of this, this experience uh, – let me say that again. The best part of this experience uh, for me, as far as the good fight, has been saying those amazing words uh, that the kings um, uh, have written, uh, both Robert and Michelle King, and uh, getting to play with amazing actors, uh, you know, with Christine Baranski, Delroy Lindo, Audrey McDonald, Chris Jumbo, um, Sarah Steele, who's mm -hmm. my heart, you know, she's the one that uh, brought me into the fold. 
uh, and you know Michael Boatman. It's just such you know such a great cast uh, of people. Um, Erica Tazel first season. Um, you know uh, Justin Bartha. It's just a lot of uh, great people have come through. Uh, um, of course, um, Rose Leslie. Uh, you know how lovely she she ha has been and had been, and um, the guest stars that have come through. I mean, I, it's just one one great after another. You know, get, getting to play with, you know, Lou Gossett Jr. was amazing first season. Um, you know, the fact that we have Ma Michael J. Fox, you know, back on our set. It's yeah. just an incredible, incredible um, place to be. You know, I, I love I love being on that set. That's awesome. So what are some of the big lessons you've learned throughout the experience so far? Uh, some of the big lessons I've learned through the experience of being on The, the Good Fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny. Okay, so um, for me, I think that's a great question. Um, for me on The Good Fight and playing Jay the Persia, the most important thing for me, because, uh, and I'll say this before, um, one of our producers, Brooke, Brooke Kennedy, asked me, um, uh, I love Brooke. Brooke and I were both gamers, so you know we both talk video games all the time. <laughs> nice. um, and if you saw the both of us talking about gaming, you'd be like, "Those two gamers, um, <laughs> yeah, huge gamers." And uh, she says to me, "What kind of investigator is Jay?" Mm -hmm. She said that like the first day I, I was on set, and I was like, "And the thing is, it all happened so quickly." And I was like, "You know, I, I don't know, I don't know. You should, you know, find out, figure that out, you know, because that's, you know." very important in terms of where what this you know where, where we go with this and i think the most important thing that i i said and did was say that i don't know you know um and i think that's where jay starts with or starts from is the idea of i don't know uh and so he but the thing is he doesn't settle for that he goes and listen he goes out does what he can and listens and gets all the information that he can. Um, that's why when you see him, you know, uh, as far as the, you know, the, myster the mysteriousness of him and, and the silence um, you get from him, um, the silence is very loud listening hmm. uh, and, um, and taking all things into account because the number one thing for an investigator uh, as an actor would, um, uh, in terms of investigating um, who someone is, um, what is the um, what is the uh, the situation I'm in, the environment I'm in, the investigation, investigating the uh, script, investigating uh, the um, the work at hand. They the, you know they they work hand in hand. Um, that investigation, that uh, sort of. Um, uh, taking the time to gather all the information is where I hold all the cards is where Jay's power lies and so so the fact that I know something that you don't mm. already makes me uh, or already puts me uh, on on the high ground uh, to make a Star Wars reference <laughs> um, I have the high ground <laughs> um, <laughs> Anakin I have the high ground anyway um, so yeah, um, so yeah, so and, and so the thing that I love to say in terms of who this guy is is from this um, this uh, documentary I saw uh, about investigative investigative reporters because Jay uh, comes from the world of investigative reporting uh, was that there's a, a public life, a private life, and a secret life. Public life mm -hmm. for everyone's consumption, private life, invitation only, and uh, the secret life is nobody's business and just being able to live in that world already i think um makes it very fun to figure out well what do what information do i give out and what do i hold how long do you think all this took to really get a grasp of who this character was because like this is a really big deep dive and this is a, a ton of range and depth in terms of understanding not only this job but this character yeah, no, it's been, you know, it's a daily, a daily thing, you know, and the thing, what I learned from my time on Mike and Molly mm -hmm. um, was because I was new, uh, and, you know, I just come from the theater, you create your character and, you know, you, you, um, you, 
you, you try it on in rehearsal and you keep, you know, keep trying until finally uh, the, you know, the play opens or you start previews, you figure it out during previews uh, and then the play opens and boom, that's the character, you know, and you go through and, you know, maybe it changes slightly, but not so much, right? Um, whereas when I was on Mike and Molly, I was like, I created the character, boom, this is mm -hmm. who he is, he's all these things, blah, 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 blah. And then a script would come in and it would contradict something that I, I had created. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, so he's that now. Okay, all right, shifted. Okay, so now I'm this, this, and that, and that, and this, we're going, boom, I got my character, bow. Then a new script would come in and it would contradict that too. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, okay, no, 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 okay. Now I'm this, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, I'm this, this. Until finally I was like, you know what? Create, um, uh, create from what you know so far. And create, you know, in terms of like, what will help you uh, believe what you're saying, you know, say what you mean, mean what you say, uh, and then, you know, play. And then of course, be open to when new information comes in because it was always changing. You know, you were always learning new things about your character, each script that came in. So, um, but the good fight, that was that. It was, um, you know, new information would constantly be coming in. You know, the fact that, you know, uh, you find out that my birth certificate um, is, it was forged and that I'm not really from this country. And it's like, whoa, okay, course, that's, yeah. that's new. Okay, okay. <laughs> I thought I was, you know, a Chicago wife. You right. know, but a little then, different uh, now. Chicago, yeah. you know, so, um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting to, to sort of, uh, evolve with the writers, you know, and be open. You have to be open. You have mm -hmm. to be open. Uh, uh, it's, it's really, uh, it's an improv in, in many ways. Yeah. I mean, you talk about evolution. How about just the evolution of TV? Like think about where you were with Mike and Molly. It's like, we're going to build shows around these really funny people. Now the good yeah. fight, it's like, we still have the great performers, but it's just like the storylines are so much more fascinating in a sense now. Yeah. I'm sure you recognize this too. Yeah, no, the storylines are great. Look, Mike and Molly was an amazing show and, yeah. a, you know, incredible actors. I think it's a show that's aged very well because mm -hmm. uh, people are, are, you know, coming to, up to me now and saying, oh my God, the, the Mike and Molly, the show was hilarious. I, I didn't know. I'm like, yeah, we try to tell you, you know, I wish, <laughs> it you, know, was wish you knew fun. then, yeah. you know, but we'd still be <laughs> you on. You missed the boat, um, man, come on. <laughs> but, you know, um, but with that show ending, I got the blessing of, of uh, being able to join this cast, um, you know, three episodes in, and um, and uh, the storylines, the writing, and in the actors that they bring on board, all amazing actors, but all actors that are are really great, great comedically, you know. So the show has a lot of, of course, awesome dramatic, uh, you know, tense storyline, but then it has a lot of humor. It's so just a very, it's just a, it's a, it's a very, I mean, yes, it's a show that goes places that, um, they, you know, I don't want to say, yeah, a play, like farce, um, but, but in many ways that's, you know, that's the case, but life is a farce. Right. It's true. You know, it's like, there's so many things that are so strange that, I mean, I'm sure if, people, someone from 40 years ago were to come to, uh, you know, travel uh, through time and see us now, they'd be like, what is the, what is going on? You know, it's just been the information overload, you know, in terms of, um, you know, what life is throwing back at us, you know? No question. Well, Niambi, great talking to you, man. Thanks so much for coming on and uh, we'll catch up with Thank you, down, you down the road, all right? Hey, I have to say this real quick, sure. um, um, you know, Mike and Molly was amazing. The Good Fight is is my jam. I need everybody to watch that. Um, uh, you know, I've had a lot of fun. You know, working, doing my thing. Just did the thing with uh, Billy Crystal and Tiffany Haddish. Uh, being able to uh, work with those comedic greats and it actually has helped fuel me. You know, back into uh, this uh, new season of uh, The Good Fight, and hopefully, you guys get to see that uh, playful side of me. Uh, you know, towards the uh, the latter uh, part of the uh, the season. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much for coming on. All right. Thank you.